Carl. It's really a pleasure having you here for this interview. Uh, we're preparing a, a MOOC on ecosystem services and I, I was told by some friends that you were among the people that have been initiating also this or be part of, uh, of this whole idea and, and concept. So to start this interview I would like you to kind of uh, summarize your quite uh, extensive and long uh, career in ecology uh, and uh, maybe that brought you here at Stanford as a professor uh, in uh, biology and uh, to give maybe some highlights of, of this uh, successful uh, career. Well, I um, did my graduate work at, at Duke University uh, and with the, that was the main place where ecology was taught in the United States at the time I was a student. And from there I got my first job at the one place I didn't want to go, Los <laughs> Angeles. <laughs> but I went to UCLA for six years and um, and started research there in local vegetation and became interested in in comparing California systems with with those in other Mediterranean regions like Chile. So I started a project doing a comparison between these and at that time um, I was offered a job at Stanford and which I gladly accepted because I'm I was I was born in Santa Rosa very near here so coming up back to Northern California was was a great thing. Okay. So. And uh, so looking backward at, uh, at uh, the work you have done and, and your role in, in uh, developing uh, ecology as a science in, uh, in, in recent years, uh, do you feel that uh, this field of uh, research, ecology, has, has uh, grown and evolved fast enough to address uh, now the kind of key societal issues that we are facing in, in protecting biodiversity? For well, that's a very good question. Um, I guess a short answer, in, in view of how fast the world is changing, um, probably no field is advancing fast enough to keep up with the changes and, and be prepared for the future that's coming. So I think that ecology is not, <laughs> is not keeping up uh, the pace, but I don't think any sector of society is because the changes are so, are so big and are happening so fast that um, it's a real challenge for all of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was wondering how you were, as a, again an ecologist, uh, doing the link between the different aspects of biodiversity, genes, species, ecosystems, with the, the, um, the functional diversity that they bring and at the end the services that they, they, they deliver to the people. Uh, do you see still kind of knowledge gaps in linking these different uh, aspects of biodiversity functions and yeah. services? Well, um, I guess I have to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that uh, I first became interested in biological diversity um, when I was on a committee, a national committee, and someone from um, the food industry asked me, he says, well, what good are all these species? You know, we have, we have all the species we need. We have chickens and cows and we have wheat and we have rice. And so what, what more do we need? And so I um, started thinking, well, we ought to be able to answer that question a little better than we've <laughs> been doing in the past. And so I um, thought the first thing that we needed to do is, is, how, is, is, is how does biological diversity um, relate to ecosystem functioning. What are the roles of the various species in, in processing the, the light that comes in from the sun and, and, and cycling the water and mining the nutrients and so forth? So that question had never been asked really is what are the relationship between ecosystem functioning and biodiversity? So I uh, was with an international organization at the time, Scientific Committee for Problems of the Environment and and suggested we start a program in that area. So that program uh, was, was very successful because I think a lot of people working in biodiversity hadn't been thinking about how, how this relates to function. So that program went on for a while and <clears throat> came to an end. And then the next phase came, well, we see, we see the diversity function relationship. How does that relate to, to ecosystem services? And that, that came later. and. Um, my I guess interest in that and was um, was sparked by this first phase, but then uh, Walt Reed uh, came up with the idea that maybe we we should extend 
um, the biodiversity concept and into ecosystem services. And so I became involved in the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, where that was developed uh, to a high level of degree and, and has now you know, become very popular in governments and so forth. It's been a wonderful, a wonderful track, I guess. Okay, you kind of answer already partly uh, my next question. Okay. Uh, knowing that uh, we are uh, apparently given the number we, we can gather on, on uh, biodiversity, species biodiversity, reaching a, a seventh uh, big extinction of biodiversity. Yeah. And uh, through apparently this time uh, uh, the destruction and perturbation by human activity. And uh, I was wondering. Uh, on which basis should be should we be worrying about this large extinction, the, the survey of biodiversity itself, or own survival, or just on ethical ground, uh, we, we cannot accept uh, yeah, well, losing I, this biodiversity. I think you know, there's, as you probably know, there's a sort of a discussion going on in this area that some people say the ethical uh, concerns should override everything about not not destroying any nature that we. And, um, and the others say, well, we, that's, very, that's a very important, powerful argument for getting people to conserve biodiversity. But there's also another powerful argument that a lot of the biodiversity provides services for, for society, for your survival. It's the life support system. And so it's important ethically, to, but it's also important for your own survival and your children's survival.